With the eyes of the world watching, China reclaimed the tiny island of Hong Kong on July the 1st, 1997. This is not only a great event for the Chinese people, but also a triumph for world peace and justice. At midnight, 4,000 troops crossed the border to reclaim a territory just one-tenth the size of Beijing. But the significance of taking back this tiny island is huge. It has regained honor for the Chinese people. The visible face of the takeover is the Hong Kong garrison, an elite force that had been training for four years for this one moment. We go inside the garrison in the vital six months before the handover, and never before seen footage, we take a glimpse behind the lines of the Red Army. Through the eyes of two recruits, we have access to a world the West has never seen. In the build-up to one of the most important nights in modern Chinese history, we find out just what it takes to be a soldier in the Hong Kong garrison. Tai'an City in Shandong Province, northeastern China. The People's Liberation Army, or PLA, is here on a special recruitment drive. Those that get in will train to be part of an elite force that will enter Hong Kong on handover day, July 1st, 1997. Han Chang is 19. He left school two years ago and hasn't been able to find work. His dad is encouraging him to try out for the army. Traditionally, the army draws many of its recruits from the country, but times are changing. The army requires higher levels of education and is attracting more city boys, like Han Chang. Would-be recruits are put through an exacting medical. It's harder to get into this garrison than any other in the PLA. OK, stop. Kick higher. Put your hands on your head. Jump on your toes. Jump hard. So you can jump the highest. OK, stop. The selection process will take the best part of a week. In addition to passing the physical, the boys must also undergo interviews that ascertain their personality and political beliefs. Anyone with relatives in Hong Kong will not be accepted. Capitalist connections might taint their allegiance to the army. Three years ago, the People's Liberation Army set about creating an elite force that would be stationed in Hong Kong from the day of the handover. At first, the garrison was kept a closely guarded secret. It was feared that news of a dedicated army guard might cause panic in Hong Kong. The existence of the garrison was made public sometime later. Based on the mainland in the southern city of Shenzhen, the garrison is just 30 kilometers from Hong Kong. While infantry makes up the bulk of the force, the garrison also boasts a naval fleet of 30 vessels and a significant air force. On July the 1st, 1997, the Hong Kong garrison will re-establish sovereign control over all of Hong Kong be it on land, sea, or in the skies. Su Zhao joined the garrison just over a year ago. He's in the second year of training and has set his sights on being in the guard of honor on handover day. So he trains hard. This time is better, 
But remember that after swinging away the enemy's gun, you must quickly follow through and fiercely stab your enemy. Tzu Zhao is from a poor farming family in Shanxi province. He'll remain in the army for the standard three years, but already he's thinking about what he'll do when he's discharged. Me, after I finish my service, I'll go home. I'll try to hew out my own path, find my own way and not rely on my family. Anyway, I'm still young. Tzu Zhao may not have any long-term plans, but one thing is certain, he will be among the first PLA soldiers to be stationed in Hong Kong after the takeover. <laughs> it's been three weeks since the recruitment interviews, and Han Chang has been accepted into the garrison. It's an honor for the whole family, and they throw him a farewell party. Han's father was brought up in a state orphanage and has strong party beliefs. Sending his son into the army is a way to repay his country. Be a good soldier with high political and military standards. That's all I ask. Don't let your officers down or the people back home. But the meaning of this honor is just beginning to sink in. Han Chang is their only son. He's much loved and has never been away from home before. Just about everyone is in tears. Han Chang now joins hundreds of new soldiers boarding trains at Tai'an Station. These young recruits are to be deployed throughout China, but 200 of them including Han Chang, are bound for the Hong Kong garrison. <laughs> Parents and recruits are treated to a showbiz send-off. Then there's a rush to find the right platform and the right train. Like Han Chang, many of these young men have never spent a night away from their parents. They have a long journey ahead of them in more ways than one. It will take two days and two nights to reach the garrison in Shenzhen city. But the army makes good use of the time. The train journey is the perfect opportunity to learn some army songs. It's the start of their political education. Come on, folks, time for a meal. Food for the mind is followed by generous helpings of fuel for the stomach. The rice is from Shandong, your hometown. Shandong's rice is really delicious. Two days and 1,600 kilometers later, the would-be soldiers are nearing journey's end. Southern China is warm and full of promise compared to the dull, wintry north they've left behind. As twilight falls, they arrive in Shenzhen city, a key center in China's economic reforms and just across the border from Hong Kong. But there's little time to take it all in. The new recruits are bundled into army trucks for the final leg of their journey. 
The bright lights of Shenzhen twinkle in the eyes of the new recruits, but their destiny lies elsewhere. The journey grinds on for another hour. Around midnight, they finally arrive at the garrison on the outskirts of Shenzhen. Inside the barracks, they will be completely cut off from the outside world, and a new and uncertain life awaits within. Despite their tiring journey, the new recruits are woken before dawn for morning roll call, drill and exercises. This will be the routine at 6am every morning, rain or shine. Then it's back to the barracks for a lesson in bed making and personal hygiene. The boys learn how to fold their quilts into perfect cubes. And still there's no sign of breakfast. Instead, a rousing chorus against fascism. Food, at last. All are feeling the subduing effects of a tiring train journey and the harsh new disciplines of army life. There's one thing that binds soldiers the world over, the army crew cut. The haircut stamps out individuality and is a pertinent reminder to all new recruits that they're in the army now. Singing lessons are frequent. This song tells of defeating the Japanese in the 1940s. As part of their induction, new recruits are closely questioned about their family lives and political beliefs. Is it your own decision to join the army, or did your parents force you to do so? It's my own decision. Is your family against it? No. When you joined the army, had you heard anything about the Hong Kong garrison from other people? I've heard about the Hong Kong garrison, but I'm not very clear about the role of the Hong Kong garrison. Uh, we the Hong Kong garrison are the symbol of exercising sovereignty over Hong Kong. You don't know about this? No, I'm not clear about this. Sovereignty is concrete, not abstract. To have troops stationed in our own territory reflects the sovereignty of a nation. Liu Jen Wu, commander-in-chief of the Hong Kong garrison and one of the highest ranking officers in the People's Liberation Army, makes an inspection of the new recruits. Did you have your hair cut on the garrison? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay with this? Yes, sir. Did you want to have a crew cut? Yes, sir. Sure? It seems your training's been going well. It's looking good. Everybody's beginning to look like a soldier. Okay? Meanwhile, Tsu Chao's company has begun to practice for the actual entry into Hong Kong at midnight on July the 1st, 1997. Senior officer, 1st Infantry Battalion is ready. Start boarding. The 
Does everyone got one? What are these bags for? For defecating and passing water. Or for spinning. On the real day of the handover, soldiers will line up on the trucks just like this. They will stand at attention for more than four or five hours. Zhu Zhao has been in Shenzhen for over a year, but he's never been outside the barracks by himself. Have you ever gone shopping? No. You've never gone shopping in Shenzhen? No. Never? Never. Only on army business? Uh, yes, but it was organized. Do you want to have a look? Yes, only we don't have the opportunity. And it will be the same once the garrison enters Hong Kong on July the 1st. Soldiers of the garrison will be the visible symbols of China's sovereignty over Hong Kong. But they will not be allowed to wander freely in the newly occupied territory. The honor of the country is at stake. Meanwhile, things are starting to get physical for the newer recruits. Han Chang is beginning to feel a strain. Many of these young men are products of China's one-child policy. Most have been indulged. But now it's time to toughen up. The work is unrelenting and it's the same day after day. The imperialists are plotting to interfere in the economic well-being of Hong Kong. Our job is to contribute to Hong Kong's prosperity and stability. Keep your knees together and your legs straight. Marching drills take several hours every day. For those recruits out of condition, it's beginning to take its toll. Your forearm, ball of the thumb should face up. Don't raise your thumb. Don't raise your thumb. Keep it down. Focus. I'll call your name if you move slowly again. If you don't mind being disgraced, I'll call your name again and again. Less than a week after arriving at the barracks, Han Chang experiences a personal crisis. He's had enough of the army and wants to go home. He reports to his instructor. I'll try to give you some advice. Let's see which is better for you, staying behind or going back home. I want to return home because the jewels here are too tiring. I can't bear it. The second reason is that I'm too homesick. You miss your parents, right? In what way do you miss your parents? Don't cry. I can't explain. You can't explain. Have you ever been away from home for long? No. You've never been away from home for a long period of time, right? Be a man. How come you cry so easily? Come on, pull yourself together. Don't cry so much. So, what else are you not used to here? It's too hot here. Well, the hot weather should be easy to overcome. Look at the layers of clothes you're wearing. Have a look at me. I only wear a vest. Nothing else inside. You'll be okay if you wear fewer clothes. Your parents hoped that the army would toughen you up. Right? Didn't I tell you the other day that if you do well, your parents will be happy? Why not take this opportunity to overcome your weaknesses with the help of your squadron leader and officers? 
Learn to bear the hardships and meet the challenges. If you return home to your family, who can help you to achieve all this? Do you still want to go back? If I can, I still want to go. But if I can't, I'll stay behind in the army. Han Chang is persuaded to stay, for now. But he is yet to face his biggest challenge. Since opening to public view in 1996, the garrison has received a constant stream of visitors. The second round of shooting now starts. After the handover of Hong Kong, this garrison will be the most visible symbol of Chinese sovereignty and power. A record 14 seconds to the top of the roof. The prestige of the garrison is centered on the Guard of Honor. It's one of only two in the whole of the PLA. The guard signifies how important the handover is to the government in Beijing. On the 1st of July, the whole world will be watching. Being selected for this elite guard is the dream of many soldiers, including Su Zhao. The demonstrations take hours of practice and a high level of fitness and concentration. Chinese boxing is a particular specialty in the PLA, and any mistake or mishap is taken very seriously. Get up. You get up. That one. Even if it's a small mistake, stand up. Even a small mistake. Still a few people haven't stood up. Are you trying to deceive me? I've stressed many times that we should treat every rehearsal as if it was on the 1st of July 1997 in Hong Kong. Teams that have made mistakes today should hold a meeting tonight at 6.20 sharp. A central part of PLA training are self-criticism sessions, where soldiers are forced to confess their weaknesses and mistakes in front of their colleagues. Three comrades in our company made mistakes in their movements. Tonight, they will make a profound self-criticism. Statement of self-criticism. Company officers, comrades in arms, during this morning's boxing rehearsal organized by the battalion, I made a mistake in the falling down movement. If we want to be really good, we have to rely on our hard work every day. From now on, I would like every comrade to keep an eye on my rehearsals and my work. Three months have now passed since Han Chang joined the garrison. He's beginning to settle in and no longer resents the rigors of army training. His fitness has improved. In some exercises, he's nearly top of the class. He's attained his first milestone in the army. He and 125 of his classmates have made it to the rank of Lie Bing. This may be the lowest rank in the PLA, but it bears huge significance. 
The recruits are now truly soldiers of the People's Liberation Army. In order to take up the sacred duty of a revolutionary army man, I swear, I love the Communist Party of China, love our socialist motherland, love the People's Liberation Army. With less than two months to go, the garrison begins preparing its soldiers for the realities of Hong Kong. This includes lessons in Cantonese, Hong Kong's main language. My apartment is on the intersection ahead. For your safety, we are imposing a curfew. What are you doing here at this time of night, sir? I'm going home. My apartment is on the intersection ahead. Please show your identity card. Here's my card. Driving Hong Kong style will also be a new experience. Unlike mainland China, where traffic moves on the right, Hong Kong retains the British tradition of driving on the left-hand side of the road. A fleet of new right-hand drive vehicles has been purchased and driving lessons are a key priority. What are you doing here at that of night, sir? What are you doing here? English lessons are also compulsory for every soldier in the garrison. Not at all. This is my duty. This is my duty. Curfew. Imposing a curfew. It's nearly six months since Han Chang joined the garrison, and his transformation is complete. He's grown up and now talks like a real soldier. Homesick. Everyone gets homesick, but I let it pass. Now that I'm in the army, I'll do my best to achieve something. It's only 70 days before the return of Hong Kong to the motherland. As a member of the Hong Kong garrison, I'm going to work harder in my training. As the big day draws closer, security is tightened. Soldiers have never been allowed outside the barracks, but from now on, they're not allowed visitors. Even family members will be turned away. Tzu Zhao nearly misses a visit from his older brother. My elder brother was at the gate, wanting to see me. His request was denied. I didn't know about it. I was dumping rubbish near the boundary fence. My brother said he just wanted to have a good look at the barracks, where his younger brother lives. So he stood on a raised bit of ground beside the compound and looked inside. I happened to be walking that way, carrying a bucket of mud to dump. I was covered in mud from head to foot. I noticed a person looking very much like my elder brother. He saw me and yelled. So, we two brothers just stood there. We both felt very bad at that moment. But we had no choice but to stand there, one inside the fence and one on the outside. We spoke only for a moment. And then I asked him to leave and not to worry about me. I told him that everything is fine with me in the army. You tell our family not to worry about me. I'm well. You tell them you saw me, but don't tell them we just spoke to each other through the fence. But Tzu Zhao has bigger things on his mind. He's been given the chance to join the Guard of Honor. Come on! You don't do the call. To be chosen for this prestigious position, he must pass an important test. The task seems simple enough. 
Candidates must hold a gun correctly while standing and marching. But the test takes a gruelling one and a half hours. First one, defects in posture. Legs bent. Second one, it's pretty good. It's sounding hopeful. Third one, the right shoulders too far forward. The last one is not lifting his chest fully. The result is, first one, pass. Second one, pass. Tzu Zhao has made it. He's in the guard of honor. Third one, fail. Fourth one, pass. But life is not going so well for Han Chang. He's been running a low fever and has pain in his chest and abdomen. Today he can't even complete the daily exercises. His squadron leader has decided he must have a medical checkup. How are you feeling this morning? I've been feeling dizzy. Take a deep breath, hold it, don't breathe out. After extensive tests, Han Chang is diagnosed as suffering from an inflammation of the prostate gland. I'm going to apply to have my treatment at home. Inflammation of the prostate is quite dangerous. How dangerous? You won't be able to have children if you don't cure the disease. And even prostate cancer. If you don't cure it. But again, Han Chang is persuaded not to return home. Instead, during his treatment, he's confined to barracks and is forbidden to do any physical activity. It's a lonely and isolating existence. June brings the rainy season and nighttime rehearsals. Because the handover of Hong Kong will be at midnight, rehearsals have been switched to the early hours of the morning. After a week, the long hours of rehearsal at the damp are getting to everyone. On Sunday evening, there's no rehearsal. But the squadron meets for a debrief and another self-criticism session. Tsu Zhao takes the lead in trying to express what everyone's feeling. Each night, it's always two or three in the morning when we come back. Everyone feels very sleepy. The cooks brought us some garlic. Last night, it kept me from getting sleepy. What I mean is that during the rehearsals we should force ourselves not to get drowsy because this is for the sake of our safety at night. This is for the sake of our own safety. By mid-June, training has intensified. But there is some light relief. Today, Tzu Zhao's squadron is assigned a very different task. This morning, our company is going to purchase casual clothes for ourselves. The regulation says when we are in Hong Kong, we need to dress informally when we go out. 
This is why we arranged today's activity. The higher authorities care a lot about us. Each of us has been given a subsidy of 500 yuan, so we can buy clothes of better quality. If you spend more than that amount, you need to pay that extra bit yourself. But this isn't a chance to taste the delights of Shenzhen city at long last. Instead, the clothes are brought to the barracks. This is home shopping, army style. As soldiers of the Hong Kong garrison, we must have good taste. When you choose clothes, find those of better quality. Don't choose the cheap ones. There are five different price levels, ranging from 280 to 1280 yuan. Once you've made your choice, you just buy it, okay? Don't buy those bad quality clothes. I expect to spend between five to six hundred yuan, but I still have another thousand yuan. Buy a pair of crocodile leather shoes. More lessons on dressing for success. The shoulders shouldn't be too wide when you wear it, they shouldn't overhang or droop down, and there shouldn't be any creases across the front. What about the two hands? Normally, when your hands are down, the shirt sleeve should be revealed a little bit. The sleeves of the suit mustn't be too long. They shouldn't be longer than the sleeves of the shirt. measuring my neck. I bought a shirt, a tie, a pair of trousers, a t-shirt. a suit. How much did you spend? 510 yuan in all. In all? Yes, I didn't purchase the high grade ones. I bought the cheaper ones. Ironically, the closed barracks policy is said to continue even after they enter Hong Kong. The boys may never get a chance to wear their new casual gear, whatever the quality. Tu Zhao is philosophical. We heard that the conditions at the barracks are pretty good after we move into Hong Kong. We don't need to go outside, and there's not much we can do outside. We only get a small allowance each month. It's not enough for us to go out. We don't have much money to spend there. If you had more money, how would you spend it? How would you spend it? If we were really allowed to go outside and we had money, I'd go out and look around to see what Hong Kong really looks like. After all, we are soldiers of the Hong Kong garrison, come here to defend Hong Kong. I'd like to see what Hong Kong really looks like. It's just 10 days until the handover. All 4,000 officers and soldiers have photos taken for their passports and IDs. As requested by the British, they will enter Hong Kong on civilian passports. At least it's one opportunity to wear that new suit. But there's one more lesson before they enter Hong Kong. All soldiers are told they must be prepared for the loose morals they may encounter. Pornography? in Hong Kong is very common. It has a long history. It came with the invasion of the British imperialists. It was then that pornography, which is the dregs and cancer of human society, was brought into Hong Kong. To steel themselves against all this moral pollution, the soldiers are shown a 1940s movie called Guards Under Neon Lights. It depicts the liberation of Shanghai by the PLA in 1949. 
It shows how the soldiers stood firm despite all the temptations that Shanghai had to offer. Every action on handover day has been gone over in precise detail. Even taking over the British Army barracks is rehearsed like a stage play. Before midnight, 30th of June 1997, we're going to have a handover with the Royal Guard team from the Prince of Wales barracks. Our team of guards may not be as tall as the British soldiers, but we must overwhelm them with our dominant manner. We're taking over the Prince of Wales barracks. You can go off duty. On behalf of the Hong Kong garrison of the PLA, I'm here to take over the Prince of Wales barracks. You can go off duty now. Han Chang and many others will be left behind on the big night, but they will have their part to play. Now fully recovered, Han Chang practices directing what will be the massive flow of traffic leaving the base as the fleet of trucks sets off for Hong Kong. New license plates with English lettering have been issued for all vehicles. ZG stands for Jugang, which means stationed in Hong Kong. Midnight rehearsals continue on until the eve of the historic day. Dawn. June 30th, 1997. In less than 24 hours, 4,000 soldiers will cross the bridge over the Shenzhen River that separates Hong Kong from the mainland. They will reclaim Hong Kong as Chinese territory. A metal strip in the middle of the bridge marks the border. It's 5 a.m. at the barracks, and the soldiers are packing up their belongings. Tonight, they will sleep in new barracks across the bridge in Hong Kong. I couldn't sleep last night. Why is that? Too excited because we're going to enter Hong Kong very soon. What were you thinking about during the night? As the advance troops, we're going to enter Hong Kong immediately. I was thinking about the job we'll do once we're there. I was also thinking about my family. I haven't heard from them for some time. I'm a bit worried. As the eve of the takeover unfolds and the troops prepare, the people of Shenzhen come out in their thousands to wish the garrison soldiers well. At the same time, tonight's historic event will be celebrated on a vast scale in cities and countryside throughout the People's Republic of China. Soldiers of the Guard of Honor receive a final pep talk. 
Tonight, the whole world will be watching you. Leaders of the party's Central Committee and the Central Military Committee and people of the whole country will be watching us. The 20 of us represent the PLA and the Hong Kong garrison. During the handover ceremony today, you should do your utmost to be at your very best. You are the most outstanding people in the Hong Kong garrison. Today, all comrades should be serious and intent. Be perfect in every step. Make sure it is flawless and attains the highest standards. Can you do that? No! Like Han Chan, every soldier will always remember this auspicious night. After dark, the troops begin to move slowly through the streets of Shenzhen city. They're given a hero send-off. The Odyssey has finally begun. Around midnight, history is made as soldiers of the garrison cross the bridge to reclaim Hong Kong for the People's Republic of China. We're crossing the border. As the heavens open, months of preparation are finally put into practice. And another chapter begins for the boys of the Hong Kong garrison. While Tzu Zhao takes up his duties in Hong Kong, Han Chang remains behind to finish his training. After the handover, security at the Shenzhen garrison is eased and his parents make the long journey from Shandong province to visit him. They're pleased and proud at the change in their only son. When we arrived here, we started to learn laws and disciplinary education. Is this good? Much better than before, right? Time goes so fast that I hadn't noticed a year has passed. Don't worry, everything's fine. I joined the army to toughen up. Uh, Han Chan <laughs> seems to have truly grown up. Even so, he's not too old to get some tender loving care from his parents. <laughs> Just before graduation, the garrison throws a party for the soldiers. Good food and plenty of beer. It's the first time in 10 months that they've really been allowed to kick back. After graduating, Han Chang learns that he too has been posted to Hong Kong. Other comrades are not so lucky. They've been told they'll stay behind in Shenzhen. I think the army can toughen you. Before I joined the army, I didn't know. I just heard that the army can build up a person. But I really didn't understand until I got here. At the end of the year, Han Chang makes the journey across the bridge into Hong Kong where he spends the next two years. And Tzu Zhao finally gets the chance to wear his suit. On the last day of his tour of duty in Hong Kong, he's allowed one day of sightseeing and shopping. The garrison continues its highly visible presence in China's new territory, but its function is still largely ceremonial. The soldiers have yet to play an active role in defending the security of Hong Kong. <laughs>